Um, I was glad to learn earlier that I'm actually a designer because I did red text on a black background, but I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, Dale set up really well. So I wrote uh, last year, after, after the story I'm going to tell you about, I wrote this book, Making Things See, for O'Reilly about helping people do projects with the Connect. And it connects to everything that we've seen here. You know, you can control a robot arm with the Arduino, scan yourself and print yourself with the MakerBot. And today I kind of just want to talk about this weird thing that happened where um, this device from Microsoft ended up as a, make, a maker tool right next to these other things that we've been talking about yesterday and today. Um, so and there's kind of three lessons that I think for other people, other companies putting out devices or, or really anyone wanting to, to see something like the take up of the Kinect. And I'll, I'll talk about these more at the end, but I just want to set them up a little bit at the beginning. Um, so I'm gonna, like, what users are already trying to build this product? I'll show you, there are actually a bunch of artists and um, interaction designers who were really trying to, wanted the Connect, had kind of built that use out of the tools they had around them. And um, then the second thing is this massively multiplayer market analysis. So Microsoft put out the Connect, and they knew what it was for, for kind of gaming. But then we saw this explosion of use of it for kind of every crazy thing under the sun, and a lot of genius things as well. So they got to see what, um, what it was for in a really rigorous exploration that it would be impossible for any one company to do. And then the last one is um, that play is innovation. You know, half of two thirds, 90% of what you see with the Connect seems just silly and crazy or ridiculous. But it's really impossible to separate those things from the really innovative things. If you just, if told Connect hackers, like, just do the important health application, they couldn't do that. You know, there's just as many silly ones, um, and they're inseparable. And sometimes you don't know which one is going to end up as which when you start. Um, so, so this is the Connect um, from Microsoft, and um, it launched in November 4th, 2010, and it sold 8 million in the first 60 days, and it sold um, coming up on 20 million um, since then. Um, it's, it was it was the fastest selling computer peripheral in history, um, and um, there had been kind of some rumblings before it came out. Um, Starting in June of 2009 at E3, Microsoft, Microsoft showed this demo they were calling Project Natal, which was a little bit baffling. It was kind of people waving their arms around in front of the computer. I like this still a lot, which is a woman handing a piece of paper to her avatar. That, like, this kind of just came out online, and no one really understood what they were. It seemed like their response to the Wiimote, but kind of a little bit silly, and people a little bit made fun of them. But, um, but at the same time, there was this creative coding community that were really doing kind of similar things. This is a project by Theo Watson, um, who's one of the core members of the Open Frameworks community, called Funky Forest, which is um, he's using cameras, conventional cameras, and um, open CV and computer vision techniques to detect the movement of that kid there um, is interacting with this kind of rich digital sound forest environment. Um, and that, actually, that demo looks actually a lot like some of the Project Natal things. Uh, another example was um, Kyle McDonald, who's an artist and researcher, had been doing work, DIY work with structured light scanning. So projecting patterns of light onto a scene and then seeing that with a camera in order to capture a 3D image. This is a 3D scan that he made in 2008, I believe. Um, and uh, that was just done with things that were totally available. And it's actually a free DIY approach that's very similar to what was used in the Connect, albeit at a much cheaper and smaller um, scale. The other thing was this kind of academic design fu futurism. So um, Jeff Hahn, everybody had seen the multi-touch table and this kind of use in, in Minority Report. And there's this great researcher at UC Davis, Oliver Kralos, who'd been working with um, um, immersive virtual reality as ways of prototyping these interfaces. And he has this very expensive caves set up. Um, but doing a lot of things, then, and you'll see as the story goes on, these were some of the earliest people to get their hands on the Connect and to do things with it because it stepped right into what they were already doing without it. Um, so, like I said, on November 4, 2010, the Connect came out, and um, within a week, open source drivers had been created that let people work with it. So, this is a great picture from iFixit showing, um, showing what's underneath that, that case of the Connect. Um, I like to show this picture partially because I just love that this kind of breakthrough computer vision device looks like Johnny Five from Short Circuit. Um, I'm going to tell you just a teeny bit about the Connect, how the Connect works, so you can understand this process of how it became open source. So the Connect has an IR projector. This is a projector that um, sends a grid of infrared dots out over whatever's in front of it, and then it's got an infrared camera that can see those dots as well as a conventional webcam. And then the firmware inside the Connect turns that infrared camera and the position of those dots into a depth image, um, a picture of how far away things are rather than what color they are. 
Um, and so there's kind of these layers in the stack to get to do fun projects. Um, the bottom is the USB driver, which just is what lets software get access to that depth image. And that was the first project for the, for the open source community, was just to take um, to get access to the depth data coming off, the, coming off of the, um, the device. And the next step there is this middleware that turns that depth information into um, positions of your body in space, which is why Microsoft shipped a depth camera to do interactive work with. And then the last is this application code. So th this is a project here called Hand Puppet by Thea Watson and Emily Goebel, um, where you move your hand and um, a really cool 3D animated bird follows it that they made very quickly. Um, so um, when the Kinect launched, um, there were a bunch of people starting to, to try to figure it out. Um, and um, one of them was Josh Blake. Um, one of the things I think that's really interesting here is the diversity of the community members this brought together. So Josh Blake um, works at Infostrat and is a Microsoft MVP. He builds amazing applications with Surface and multi-touch applications is what he was doing. And he was really excited about the Kinect. Had never had any exposure to open source software before. Um, Kyle Machulis is a systems engineer at Mozilla um, who, what he does is hack hardware and make it open. Um, and he, does, he has the Open U project for um, open sex toys and other things like that. Um, and um, the two of them came together, worked with the data that Lamore and Phil provided of the, the protocol, with, from the protocol analyzer, and um, formed an open community to make a library that could let people access the Connect, the LibFreeNect. Lib so, so it was just Lamore and Freed, uh, Lamore and Phil, I was talking to yesterday, they did this amazing thing, which is when the Kinect came out, they offered a $2,000 bounty um, for uh, drivers that would let people access it, that bottom layer of the stack. And Microsoft started threatening them and lawsuits, so of course they in increased the bounty to $3,000. <laughs> um, and, um, <laughs> um, and they didn't back down, and within a week, um, Hector Martin here had posted the first nascent version of LibFreeNet, the USB drivers that let um, anyone get access to that depth data from the Kinect. And Josh and Kyle it all came together and formed what was really one of the most vibrant and well-organized open source communities I've ever seen. It came together in less than a week. Um, they agreed to donate the, the prize money to charity instead of letting it become a kind of competitive problem. Um, and they got, they're incredibly well-organized and well-documented in a very welcoming community. Um, and then, so that's that kind of bottom layer, but then to get up to the point where people can actually make applications with it, um, it needed to get libraries in these kind of creative coding um, environments. So Open Frameworks is one of them, um, and Theo wrote a library for Open Frameworks. Processing, um, a professor of mine, Dan Schiffman at NYU ITP, made a library for processing. And now that, now you're at the point where work with the protocol analyzer becomes something that any design student can make work with, or any artist can immediately now access um, that, that information. So this is a project I like to show on, for the silly side, is Dan Wilcox, um, where just using the depth information, he um, tracked his body and was able to locate his man boobs, as he calls them, and to display <laughs> graphics over the top of them. Um, there's music that goes with this that I'm sparing you. Um, <laughs> And so this is, you know, this is not, like, is this hardware innovation? It, it really is. Like, um, it's, uh, it, the, this is unlocking all this energy to do these, like, silly and also really amazing um, computer vision projects that were, that people knew they had been trying to do. It never worked that well. And the connect to this device, this unintentionally open device, just made these <laughs> projects possible to do. Um, uh, Kyle McDonald, um, who's another member of the Open Frameworks community, um, was an artist in residence at MakerBot, and he had done the structured light scanning work. He figured out how to use the depth images from the Kinect as a real working 3D scanner very quickly, that, and to solve the technical problems, allowing him to go from the Kinect depth image to um, files that you could print out on the MakerBot. Um, and you kind of see knowledge of these different areas exploding through the open source communities, where the, now that you've got the Kinect, people are able to to go from just the computer vision part of the problem to the rest of the problem, the interaction design and the 3D fabrication. Um, and so PrimeSense, which is the Israeli company that actually designed and licensed the hardware to Microsoft behind the Kinect, they got excited about seeing all this activity, and they open sourced that next layer of the stack, the middleware that goes from the depth images to the skeleton data. And that is really powerful for, for interaction. Um, so I talked about this a little bit yesterday, but um, that 
um, OpenNI, which provides the joint positions, is what allowed us to do this gauge motion project of tracking people's bodies in order to automate um, involuntary motion tests, has done thousands of interactive projects all over the place, actually um, making that minority report demo real in a lot of ways, and, um, and just tons of medical applications. And then finally, um, at the end of last year, Microsoft announced that they were going to do an SDK. And um, they've done actually a really great job with it. They've, through Josh Blake and others in the community, they've, they've really reached out to the community. They, they've done this, this SDK with relatively liberal terms for letting people use it. It launched on February 1st, 2012. Um, and they've also been advertising based on all of these amazing things that people have figured out how to do with the Connect. They did this Connect effect video, um, I won't show here, but that shows a lot, that's really inspired by a lot of the hacks that the community themselves came up with. They even used that um, hand puppet of Theo's um, in one of their ads, um, this really ridiculous ad with uh, Christopher Lloyd that they made. Um, but um, they have a sense of um, have the power of this exploration of the possibilities of this device that have happened. This video shows this is a game of a kid playing um, for re physical rehabilitation, kicking these graphics on screen. And, um, at NYU ITP, where I teach, um, we do a lot of assistive technology work, and that's I've seen a dozen student projects that are in this genre um, of using the connect motion tracking to make physical rehabilitation more fun, or to um, to give patients feedback um, in various different ways. Um, so, so I think that was a very quick attempt to show you the story, and I think that. Um, there's lots of opportunities for other people releasing innovative devices and software to really follow through this, this same process. Um, to, you know, the, Microsoft kind of got to go through this by accident. They didn't go and talk to the Open Frameworks community or the processing community or the, the artists and designers who were building this stuff. They didn't talk to Oliver Kralos, but as soon as he got his hands on his, their device, he had used it to make his... Um, his, to replace all of the very expensive computer vision hardware in, in Keck Caves and to do incredible, immersive, real-time um, uh, virtual reality stuff in his research environment. Um, and then we've just seen this incredible exploration of what's possible. And now Microsoft has started a, um, a, a small seed venture fund to help turn some of those into real businesses. And um, uh, they've invested heavily in the Connect in in adding it to Windows and kind of turning those into more formal, um, paving those cow paths, as Tim likes to say. Um, and then that, this idea that play is innovation, you know. The, um, that Dan Wilcox project, the, the TD Tracker, it's easy to laugh at, but the, um, it's not that different from what's necessary to do the um, assistive technology projects. And um, the same people who start off playing end up doing projects that change the world. So thank you very much. And I'm happy to switch.